Hello friends, myself Dr. Nandukumar Aubawale from College of Engineering Ambazoge is uh, going to deal with fluid mechanics. So now we will see what we have discussed in previous lecture that is a water hammer in pipes. Now today we are going to discuss about dimensional analysis then fundamental dimensions and derived quantities, <coughs> dimensional homogeneity and methods of dimensional analysis. So now what this uh, dimensional analysis is, dimensional analysis is nothing but the analysis of dimensions. So dimensional analysis is a method of uh, dimension analysis or uh, analyzing the dimensions uh, such as in terms of uh, length, mass and time that is uh, we have to do the analysis so that the standard uh, methods are uh, we can say that is the system of units which uh, can be used uh, or it can be generalized so that is the main purpose of dimensional analysis so whatsoever may be the system of units may be FPS, uh, MKS, CGS or SI system of units so if uh, the system is uh, dimensionally homogeneous any system of units can be used so for that purpose this dimensional analysis uh, plays an important role and this dimensional analysis plays a very important role in research work so now it deals with the dimensions of physical quantities such as uh, say for example mass or velocity or we can say acceleration so all these are the physical quantities and uh, it deals with the dimensions of such physical quantities then physical quantities are measured by comparison so one physical quantity is compared with the another physical quantity uh, that is the basic method of dimensional analysis so here uh, we are going to have three uh, dimensions that is length mass and time these are the fixed dimensions three fixed dimensions or we call these uh, length mass and uh, time length mass and time are known as fundamental dimensions so basic dimensions so these three are known as a fundamental dimensions and used for research work uh, or design or model testing. So generally what we do, model and prototype, you might have studied about or you might have heard about the model and prototype. So instead of constructing actual prototype, so first of all model is constructed on the basis of this dimensional analysis and that model is tested and when the results uh, obtained from model uh, are studied then the, depending on that result the prototype is designed and finally prototype is developed so this is the base for developing a prototype and for developing prototype model is to be analyzed and in order to analyze model so that model is nothing but a replica of a prototype it is a duplicate of a prototype and the results on the model are uh, similar uh, are predicted as the similar results for prototype so modeling is uh, very important in research work therefore this uh, dimensional analysis plays important role in research work for model testings now uh, what are the secondary or derived quantities so as we have seen length mass and time l m t that is uh, uh, these three are the fundamental dimensions whereas the secondary dimensions or derived quantities are nothing but the quantities which are derived from uh, one or more of the fundamental dimensions so uh, say for example length mass and time are these fundamental uh, dimensions whereas say for example velocity velocity is nothing but uh, distance covered per unit time so length and time these two are the basic fundamental uh, dimensions which arrive in this uh, velocity so uh, velocity is a derived or secondary a uh, quantity whereas length mass and time are fundamental uh, quantities so therefore uh, that is a density acceleration velocity these are the derived quantities which involve the fundamental quantities such as length mass and time so for example we have velocity uh, distance per unit time so distance per unit time length distance is length and time is represented by t so this is a uh, derived or secondary quantity whereas density is mass per unit volume so m 
divided by L cube. So mass is represented by M and distance is presented by L. So M per L cube is the derived dimension for density. So acceleration again it is distance per second square that is L divided by T square. So these are the derived quantities. So this velocity density acceleration are the derived quantities only three quantities that is length mass and time are known as the fundamental quantities whereas rest are the known as the derived quantities so now we have here one table so here the quantity physical quantity is given length so that is symbol for length is l and dimension is l so for mass symbol is m dimension is m then for time symbol is t and dimension is t now we see geometric uh, quantities that is area so area is represented by a so length into length so length square so this is dimension so for volume length it is represented by v and length into length into length so these three dimension length width height so all these are uh, nothing but uh, distance so distance is uh, distance to the power of 3 distance is represented by l so l to the power of 3 and so on so all these uh, quantities which are represented in this table uh, except first that is fundamental so these three are fundamental and rest are the derived so all these are derived quantities for which we have various symbols so these symbols are used generally uh, for different quantities and these terms in last column are representing this dimension for each and every quantity so this is nothing but dimension for given parameter or given quantity now we see here a problem so what this problem is saying determine the dimensions of quantities given below so what are the quantities given below that we see here so very first is angular velocity then angular acceleration discharge and kinematic viscosity force and specific weight and dynamic viscosity these are the quantities which are secondary or derived so we need to find out dimensions for these uh, secondary quantities or derived quantities now we see one by one how to obtain the quantities or dimensions for these quantities now we see first is angular velocity angular velocity so angular velocity is given by angle covered in radian angle covered in radian divided by time taken what is this angular velocity you might have uh, heard so this is the angle covered in radian per unit time so this is angular distance covered is having unit as radian so that is taken as one and for time we have we are representing it by t therefore so this is represented by t to the power of minus 1 so t to the power of minus 1 is the dimension for angular velocity now second is angular acceleration so angular acceleration is given by angle covered or radian per second square radian per second square so this is 1 divided by t square second is unit for time so this can be written as t to the power of minus 2 so now we will go for third that is discharge discharge as we know discharge is given by area into velocity so area is nothing but 
distance square meter square unit is meter square that is distance square that is l square and then velocity is distance per unit time l divided by t so this discharge is nothing but l square into l is l cube divided by t or this can be written as l cube into t to the power of minus 1 so l cube into t to the power of minus 1 is the dimension for this discharge q so for discharge q the dimension is l cube into t to the power of minus 1 now coming to this next term that is kinematic viscosity fourth term viscosity which is represented by nu and this is given by nu divided by rho nu divided by rho where where this mu is given by is given by another equation that is shear stress tau is equal to mu do u by do y so this mu can be written as tau divided by do u by do y so now this uh, tau is nothing but shear stress and divided by do u is nothing but velocity so this is change in velocity change in velocity so dimension for velocity is distance per unit time divided by again for dy change in the distance that is l so this shear stress is nothing but force per unit area force divided by area and this ll gets cancelled in this denominator so what is going to be there in the denominator is 1 divided by t so ll gets cancelled 1 divided by t is going to remain in the denominator therefore this force can be written as mass into acceleration mass into acceleration this force divided by area area and this 1 divided by t which is in the denominator comes into the numerator or we can write this as 1 divided by t so again this mass is represented by m so this mass has dimension we call as m and dimension for acceleration is distance per square time that is t square divided by so this we take here sign area is l square into 1 divided by t 1 divided by t now so if we simplify this in numerator m into l divided by t square divided by l square divided by t so this can be written as m l divided by t square into t divided by l square so t gets cancelled with this square l gets cancelled with this square so what we get is m divided by t l or this can be written as m l to the power of minus 1 t 
20 to the power of minus 1 this is for mu so this is dimension for mu now we have this kinematic viscosity for kinematic viscosity we are going to write this mu e divided by rho so now kinematic viscosity is equal to mu divided by rho so now this rho is nothing but mu nu is equal to dimension for uh, mu is uh, known to us now we find dimension for uh, density density is nothing but mass per unit volume so unit for mass we write as dimension for mass as m and dimension for volume we write as a l cube distance to the power of 3 that is nothing but m l to the power of minus 3 now this is for rho now nu is equal to mu divided by rho so now mu unit or dimension is m l to the power of minus 1 t to the power of minus 1 and dimension for this rho is m l to the power of minus 3 so m m gets cancelled so l to the power of minus 3 if we transfer into the numerator that becomes l cube then l to the power of minus 1 t to the power of minus 1 so what we write here is l square so 3 minus 1 is l square t to the power of minus 1 so for new dimension is l square l square t to the power of minus 1 so this is uh, dimension for kinematic viscosity that is l square into t to the power of minus 1 now we see for force fifth term is force so force is nothing but mass into acceleration mass into acceleration now we can see here the dimension for mass is m and dimension for acceleration is length per square time that is l divided by t square so we write it as m l t to the power of minus 2 so is the dimension for force then sixth one is specific weight So this specific weight is nothing but weight per unit volume. Now this weight is nothing but a force. So what is difference between weight and force? So force can be in any direction but weight is always the force acting in the direction towards center of earth. So difference between weight and force. Force can be the entity which can act in any direction whereas weight always acts towards center of gravity therefore so weight is nothing but force one type of force divided by volume now so what is the unit for force just we have seen here dimension for force is m l t to the power of minus 2 m l t to the power of minus 2 divided by volume has got l to the power of 3 dimension is l to the power of 3 so what we can transfer this l to the power of 3 numerator already l is there so this becomes minus so therefore m l to the power of minus 2 t to the power of minus 2 is going to remain so this m l to the power of minus 2 t to the power of minus 2 is the dimension for specific weight now we have another uh, entity that is quantity seventh that is dynamic viscosity dynamic viscosity so this is mu already we have derived the equation for mu as dimension for mu is m 
L to the power of minus 1, T to the power of minus 1. Already we have discussed this to find mu here. So mu is M L to the power of minus 1, T to the power of minus 1. So this is how we have obtained the dimensions for various terms or various quantities, physical quantities uh, in terms of MLT. So, M represents mass, L represents distance, T represents time. So, these are all are uh, derived uh, physical quantities, whereas length, time and mass are fundamental physical quantities. Now, coming to this dimensional homogeneity, what is this dimensional homogeneity? So, for example, we have an equation, say, Y is equal to X square. So here uh, y is equal to x square. So dimension or unit for y is say for example meter square. And this x is uh, having a unit meter means meter square. So meter is the unit for dimension that is length. Length square is equal to length square. So if a equation having dimension on both sides as the same that is on left hand side is equal to left uh, right hand side then such equations are known as dimensionally homogeneous equations so a equation having uh, similar dimensions or identical dimensions on both sides on left hand side as well as on right hand side such equations no, are known as uh, dimensionally homogeneous equations and what is the advantage of uh, these uh, equations is nothing but these equations are independent of system of units system of units means we can use mks fps or uh, si system any system of units can be used for such equations so this is uh, the uh, significance of dimensional homogeneity so if the equation is uh, having dimensional homogeneity or dimensionally homogeneous then we can use any system of uh, units we see here dimensional dimensions of each term in equation on both sides of equation are equal just i told you on both hand side the dimensions must be same so such uh, equations are known as dimensionally homogeneous so these equations are known as dimensionally homogeneous equations whereas the powers of fundamental dimensions on both sides of equation are identical as i told you on left hand side is l say for l t to the power of minus 1 on right hand side if we find l into t to the power of minus 1 then such equation having dimensions similar <coughs> on both sides such equations are known as dimensionally homogeneous equations so l and t are fundamental dimensions l and t are fundamental dimensions and power of these are identical therefore we call this as a dimensionally homogeneous equation so such equations are independent of system of units as i told you any system of units can be used for these uh, equations now we will have an equation or example so we have v velocity is equal to square root of 2 gh this is one equation so now this velocity is independent variable we call velocity as a dependent variable g and h are independent variable as we change this h value or g value v is going to change so we call this v as independent variable and h and g are uh, dependent uh, sorry independent variable g and h are independent variable and v is dependent so this 2 into g is constant because uh, g is the acceleration due to gravity so this term is going to be constant whereas h is not a constant it is a variable so this h is known as a uh, independent uh, variable whereas v is called as a dependent variable now let us see the dimension for velocity so velocity is measured uh, in terms of meters per second that is meters per second means length per unit time so dimension for velocity on left hand side is l t to the power of minus 1 so this is the dimension on left hand side of this equation now we see for dimension on right hand side dimension on right hand side right hand side of this equation so this is square root of 2gh 
so this 2 is constant it has got no unit so square root of this g is nothing but acceleration due to gravity that is distance per square time that is uh, meters per second square meter is nothing but length and second square is time time square into h h is nothing but distance that is height l so this we can write as square root of l square divided by t square or we can write this as l divided by t so now we have written this as l divided by t means l into t to the power of minus 1 so now we call this as a dimension on right hand side now we can see here dimension on left hand side is l t to the power of minus 1 dimension on right hand side of this equation is l t to the power of minus 1 so we have original equation v is equal to square root of 2 g h so now first we obtained dimension on left hand side for v and then afterwards we obtain dimension for right hand side on this uh, for right hand side of this equation so now we can see here l t to the power of minus 1 l t to the power of minus 1 for both so l t to the power of minus 1 is equal to l t to the power of minus 1 so if we find similar dimensions or identical dimensions on both side of the equation then such equation is known as a dimensionally homogeneous equation and for such equations any system of units can be used so this is the advantage of a dimensional analysis now we move for uh, methods of dimensional analysis so there are uh, different methods that is two methods are used so depending on the physical phenomena these two uh, methods are used one is a release method and second one is buckingham's pi theorem method so if number of variables involved in physical phenomena are known so if we know what uh, variables are involved such as length height width velocity acceleration viscosity so if we know what is involved in this and then if we know these uh, uh, physical quantities in this phenomena then the uh, equations can be framed or variable dependability if it is known then we can find out dimensions for dependent variable as well as independent variable and we can correlate the dependent variable with independent variables and frame the equations so there are two methods that is first method is known as release method and second one is known as buckingham's pi theorem method so what is this release method and release method and buckingham's pi theorem method that we see so this release method is uh, nothing but uh, a method which correlates uh, dependent variable with independent variable so as i told you independent variable and dependent variable what is dependent variable and independent variable just we have seen v is equal to square root of 2 g h so this h and g we can say are independent variables and v is dependent variable so by alteration in the values of h and g this value of v is going to change so this v is known as a dependent variable on g and h now uh, as we know dependent and independent variables so this uh, method a release method is used for determining the expression for variables which depend on maximum maximum four variables not more than four three to four variables if uh, it exceeds then this method becomes laborious to find the equation therefore uh, this release method is feasible to use for uh, four variables not more than four variables then if number of independent variables exceeds more than four then this method release method becomes difficult to find out the expression for dependent variable as i told you so here we see only three variables so release method can be used whereas if we have more than four variables such variables then this release method is not feasible now uh, we see what this release method is let us say uh, x is the dependent variable dependent variable and x1 and x2 x3 are independent variables as i told you so then we can say that x is the function of x1 x2 and x3 
uh, independent variables as we have seen v is equal to square root of 2 g h so <coughs> this v is function of g and h we call this v as function of g and h similarly we call this x as a dependent variable x1 x2 and x3 are independent variable therefore x is function of x1 x2 x3 therefore we can write it as according to Rayleigh's method x is function of x1 x2 and x3 that is uh, mathematically we can write x is function of x1 x2 and x3 or in other words we can write this x as the function or k into x1 to the power of a x2 to the power of b x3 to the power of c so where k is the constant and a b c are the arbitrary constants we call a b c as arbitrary constant now we can see this as where k is constant and a b c are arbitrary constants now we will have one example simple example for a release method to find out the equation for a dependent and independent variable or uh, we can say correlate dependent variable with independent variable now we see here the time period t there is one problem the time period t for a pendulum depends what is pendulum so this is the pendulum which has got a mass at the base and we swing it so this swing of pendulum we can find and for this pendulum we can find the time period depends on the length so time period for pendulum t depends on length of this pendulum where and acceleration due to gravity so it depends on g derive an expression for time period of this pendulum now what we do we identify dependent variables and independent variables so this t is independent dependent variable and l and g are independent variables so what we can write here according to release method t is equal to k l to the power of a and into g to the power of b where k is constant some constant and g uh, sorry uh, a is a and b are arbitrary powers powers now we have to find out the value of a b then we can get a equation t is equal to k into l to the power of a some value g to the power of some value b that we can write here so now just we find out this uh, like this uh, t is equal to we write this as k l to the power of a and g to the power of b so what this t is having dimension t has got dimension as time that is nothing but t on other side we can call this as a k is constant which has got no dimension so for l for length of the pendulum l we can write as l to the power of a and g is nothing but acceleration due to gravity for this dimension is we say as length per square second that is meter per uh, second square so this can be written as l t to the power of minus 2 so we can write this as l t to the power of minus 2 to the power of b so now we can simplify this k l to the power of a then l to the power of b then t to the power of minus 2b we can write this is equal to t so now equating or we can write this as t is equal to k l to the power of a plus b so bases are same indices can be added a plus b into t to the power of minus 2p now on left hand side t to the power is nothing means here is 1 so power of t is 1 so 1 is equal to minus 2 into b so power of t is 1 here on left hand side and power of t on right hand side is minus 2b therefore b is equal to minus 1 by 2 so we have obtained the value of b in this case so value of b is uh, minus 1 by 2 
now uh, on uh, right hand side there is no term l l is not there therefore we can write l to the power of 0 l to the power of 0 means it is 1 so l to the power of 0 is nothing but 1 so we uh, take base as l on uh, left hand side is uh, base is l and power is 0 whereas on right hand side l is base power is a plus b that therefore bases are same that means uh, indices must be same therefore 0 is equal to a plus b now we know value of b that is 0 is equal to a minus 1 by 2 or a is equal to 1 by 2 now substituting these values of a and b in this original equation what we have assumed here so we can write this equation as t is equal to k into l to the power of a means a value is 1 by 2 and t to the power uh, g to the power of g to the power of b value is minus 1 by 2 so we can write this as k l divided by g to the power of 1 by 2 so this 1 by 2 if we transfer in the denominator negative becomes positive so l divided by g power is 1 by 2 so we can write this as k square root of l by g t is equal to k l divided by g so by practical it is obtained the value of constant k is obtained t is equal to 2 pi into square root of l divided by g so this constant value k is equal to 2 pi is obtained by experimentation and then uh, we find this time period of a pendulum is given by this equation yeah, t is equal to 2 pi in square root l divided by g so this is the equation if we know length and acceleration due to gravity then we can find out time period for a given pendulum so acceleration due to gravity is constant so only variable is l so depending on the value of l so this time period is going to change so as i say that g is constant with the assumption that we are going to do it at a particular location on the ground so at that time this is going to be constant if you move away from the uh, earth surface then the acceleration due to gravity is going to vary at that time this is also going to be a variable so if you are doing experiment on the earth surface then g, g is constant if you are moving away from earth surface then this acceleration due to gravity is going to vary as you move away then acceleration due to gravity is going to decrease and if you move towards earth surface acceleration due to gravity is going to increase so depending on where you are doing this experiment this value of g is taken whereas length is nothing but length of pendulum so this is the length of thread so distance from this point to this this is l so length of thread is playing a major role in deciding the time period for this pendulum so this is how this uh, release method helps us to find out the equation or expression which correlates this dependent variable t with independent variable l and g so l and g are termed as independent variables and t is termed as dependent variable and it correlates the dependent variable with independent variable by giving or yielding this equation k t is equal to k square root of l divided by g where this k is constant and which is obtained by experimentation as 2 pi so here we stop and tomorrow we will discuss about some few more problems using uh, few more expressions using this release method and we will have the introduction about buckingham's pi theorem method also <coughs> thank you